is up you guys it is jay is here no at all no at all when somebody criticizes her she will say well i'm a bigger content creator so i must be better than you i'm a better person we just hit 15 million followers on tiktok that's insane you're a bad person frankly i think jay is just a bad person and like it's one of the reasons why she's always in the forefront of drama because she thinks she's literally better than me ah! told you i was an extremely toxic hateful person it is so hateful and it is so violent. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo tasting platform. Today's episode of What Are People Mad Me For Now? In my past, I said disgusting things to people. They made seven videos about it! Disgusting people like you are who make me and other disabled people feel incredibly unsafe in the world. Can you please leave me the f alone? Nobody that's famous on TikTok or YouTube means All right, we're all lucky. That's it white kid just comes up to me and he's like oh my god are you JS? and i'm like yeah hi and he's like you're a f***ing you piece of and i'm just like holding boxes and i'm like oh okay told you I was an extremely toxic, hateful person. Like, I was just mean to everybody. I got into arguments for no goddamn reason yeah. and said awful shit just because it's, it shouldn't sound like an excuse and I don't want it to sound rage. like that, but like it was just like I hated myself, so I hated everybody kind of thing. Hurt people hurt people. Social media has made this reality all too apparent. Do you have a side of yourself that you try to keep hidden? A side of yourself filled with anger and rage that occasionally boils over? Do you know someone with a tendency to have, well, meltdowns? They made seven f***ing videos about it! And should this angry side of a person be seen as just a character flaw or the essence of who they are? I've gone through a lot of therapy and worked on it and like figured out what was wrong. But like, and like I was just mean to everybody. Luckily, most people in this world won't have to experience every single aspect of themselves being picked apart and examined. But social media has created a new cultural norm for those who share their lives publicly to be examined under a microscope in excruciating detail. And sometimes, maybe even most times, the public does not like what they see. But when does drama become too petty to be important. How far back into someone's past is it acceptable to examine them and determine them canceled? And does hating an influencer really help anyone? Or does it just add to the overwhelming negativity that we see on social media? To be examined by millions, seen and rejected for who you are is a terrifying thought and the harrowing reality for only Jayus, someone who has become TikTok's most hated creator. While only Jayus has amassed almost 18 million followers on TikTok and over 3 million subscribers on YouTube, they've also gained a large following of people who hate them as well. Currently, there's a change.org petition to ban Only Jayus from TikTok that has over 440,000 signatures. The change.org petition reads as follows. Only Jayus, aka Isabella Avila, needs to be banned from TikTok. TikTok. In February of 2021, Jayus was caught in a scandal due to some racist remarks by Jayus being revealed. Jayus apologized by stating they would lift black voices and share their platform with creators of color, but has failed to hold up on any of their promises. Their problematic issues have also branched out to them making a joke about robbing disabled people and hosting rigged giveaways. Isabella has a following of 13.5 million followers on TikTok that see videos like this. Please sign the petition to help get Only JS off this app and make it safer for all creators. So how did this all start? And how did public perception of Only JS completely shatter? And through it all, who is the real Isabella Avila? The hated Only JS or the loved Only JS? Is it both online personas existing at the same time or is it neither? We just hit 15 million followers on TikTok. That's insane. It doesn't feel real. I can't comprehend that number or how many people just know my face.
Known by their internet alias, Only JS, who was born Isabella Avila and calls themselves Bella. Only JS. You can call me Bella. Bella? Okay, yeah. Bella uh, Avila, right? Avila. Started TikTok in October of 2018 under the username Only JS. The word JS is an Indonesian word for something so unfunny that you can't help but laugh, or someone who tries too hard to be funny. Bella didn't start uploading consistently until August of 2019. And by September, Isabella had reached 100,000 followers. At the time, Bella also worked as an employee at Best Buy in order to make some income. When I first started out on TikTok, I would go home after work and still be in my uniform while I made videos, they explained. But someone at their workplace eventually found these videos and sent them to Best Buy Corporate, who fired Isabella shortly after. I got fired from Best Buy. I was working at Best Buy making videos in my uniform they found out about oh, it yeah, not yeah. even at work like before work after work just in my uniform they found out about it told me to delete the videos or we're gonna fire you so i deleted the videos and then they fired me bella getting fired made them realize that they wanted to pursue content creation full time two weeks later i hit a million followers so it ended up kind of working out like getting fired was the best thing ever because i could just focus on making That's videos crazy. it seems for isabella this was finally a chance to be extraordinary and do something different to try and create a name for themselves outside of the story that they were given since birth i saw this as my chance to do something that i loved rather than go and find another normal job where i could be be just as replaceable as I was with Best Buy. It was a huge risk that ended up working out for the better, Isabella explained. So only Jayus became Isabella's brand, and soon Isabella themselves became known as only Jayus. And Bella began to upload consistent content fueled by the need to make something of themselves. And by October of 2019, only a month after accumulating 100,000 followers, Isabella reached 1 million followers on TikTok. And in that same month, Isabella created a YouTube channel, also going by the name Only JS, where they uploaded a similar format of content. And the main type of content that Only JS posts are fact-based videos and comedic videos about science and psychology, usually in that sort of life hack form or giving out quick tips. Psychology tricks that work on kids that I know work because I have like a dozen younger siblings. Here are three things that you should probably look out for in somebody else's body language. Which is definitely engaging as a content format, but I also worry about the accuracy of it, especially when you have to put out so many videos. It seems unlikely that you're going to actually do your research and due diligence in the content you're posting, and it seems more likely that you're probably going to spread a lot of misinformation, which only JS has been called out for a ton of times. Did you know that there's an extremely rare genetic mutation that can actually cause purple eyes? It's called Alexandria geneticis disorder. A psychology fact. In fact, the only psychology fact you need to know. No properly trained psychologist is going to be talking about psychology facts because that's not how psychology works. But looming over this newfound fame is every creator's worst nightmare, cancellation and irrelevance. It's not so much about what other people think about me, but that I'm afraid of letting myself down. I've wanted to be these famous people I see on my TV and computer screens all my life. And if I somehow mess up my chance at it, I think I would just be really disappointed in myself. It seems at times we're really our own worst enemy. And when we let our fear overcome us and completely control us, that fear can so easily become reality. But despite the fear Isabella had of the only JS brand collapsing, the only JS social media accounts continued to grow. And in February of 2020, Netflix uploaded a teaser for their new podcast, Know It All, where Netflix selected Isabella as their host. The Know It All podcast ran for 28 episodes, and out of 1.6 thousand reviews on Apple, it was rated 4.8 out of 5 stars, receiving pretty widespread approval from audience members. Hi, my name is Bella, and you might know me as Jay is from TikTok or YouTube, but you're about to know me from this podcast. Know it, all. know it all. And each episode, I'm going to help you become a know it all about something new. Here we go.
Despite Isabella's seemingly uncontroversial brand of informational style content, only JS has gotten into a ton of controversy. It does not get any worse than that. It is so hateful and it is so violent. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo tasting platform. You're a bad person. Frankly, I think JS is a bad person. Isabella is known for not taking criticism very well. He did not like that f***ing answer. He won't leave me the f alone. Responding to almost every single hate thread that they're involved in, which is a dark path that I really don't recommend for anyone who spends any length of time on the internet. The internet and social media is truly like a black mirror, reflecting to you whatever you fill your attention and mind with. If you spend your time focusing on hate, your online world will quickly become consumed with it. And hate has a ripple effect like nothing else on the internet. Internet. Something so small and abysmal can actually be the tiny spark that lights the fire of one's downfall, or rather, leaves a raw and exposed truth, a darker truth about a beloved influencer. In my past, I said disgusting things to people, and I am so ashamed of myself for using racist rhetoric and derogatory language to hurt others. One of only Jayus's tweets, I feel like I always whistle when I say that, tweets. Sorry about that. One of only Jayus's tweets back in 2020 could be seen as that initial spark in their downfall. This tweet read, I constantly feel like nobody actually likes me. So when I see thousands of hate comments saying, yeah, I never liked only Jayus, she's so annoying. Jayus seems like a horrible person. That pushed me to the edge. I'm not entirely sure what Jayus's intention was with this tweet, but it seemed to do the opposite of whatever they were intending and only caused them to receive a massive influx of hate. This hostility surrounding only Jayus was only amplified even more when Isabella tried to expose another content creator on TikTok, one who they believed were copying their videos. In July of 2020, only Jayus tried to publicly oust the content creator, the Jonathan Moss. When Jayus made a video claiming that the Jonathan Moss was copying their content. So only Jayus put on her Instagram, this dude copied my content more than once and when she crawled me out, I threatened her and then deleted the comments. And I found the contents off Google. And then somebody sent me her video and I was like, yeah, she made it. And then she got really aggressive. I said, hey, you made it first. That's fine. But then it started to get really bad. Like people started sending me stop threatening and taking only Jay's content. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, wait a minute. What, what, what is this? I never threatened her. I just said she gaslighted her fans, as in making her seem like the victim in a lot of things that she does wrong. The audience sided with Jonathan, and Isabella received a massive influx of comments basically calling her out for trying to send a bunch of hate to another creator. I do not own information. I think it's okay for other creators to do fact videos. It literally does not bother me. I just think it's really weird when other big creators think it's okay to copy my video word for word and act like you didn't. Did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on who you are as a person and the things that could possibly happen to you? Yo, did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on you and the things that can happen to you in your life? People born in March are way more likely to have asthma. And I can actually speak to this one because my little sister, the only one born in March, has asthma. People that are born in March are actually more likely to have asthma. And I can speak to that because my cousin, the only person born in March, has asthma. I don't want Jonathan to get hate, so stop with the fucking death threats that he's saying he's getting, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He tried to copy this video when I first posted it, and now he's trying again months later. And I think as bigger creators, we should be better than that, and I think he should just own up to it. Don't get me wrong, the two videos from the two creators on TikTok are very similar, and it does suck that copying content is so commonplace on social media. There definitely is a difference between being inspired by someone's content and then blatantly mimicking it. That being said, I think what most people were angry about with this controversy was the way that Isabella handled calling out Jonathan, because they said things that weren't true, like Jonathan threatened them, and called them out so publicly before giving Jonathan an opportunity to 
explain themselves. That wasn't the proper way to handle the situation and made Isabella look bad. And then when people had a problem with the way Bella handled the situation, Bella refused to see where they went wrong in it and continued to focus on the fact that they thought Jonathan copied their video. And this is where a side to Only Jayus began to shine through that their audience really did not like. Because Only Jayus not only responded to hate poorly, but was steadfast in believing that they're always the one in the right. And well, that rubbed people the wrong way. To insult someone for being in a relationship with a black person by calling them a n lover? It does not get any worse than that. It is so hateful and it is so violent. Bro, a forced fake watered down apology will not cut that. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo tasting platform. She's canceled in my eyes and that she's a piece of crap. The two moved on and continued to grow until Isabella found themselves in a much more significant controversy than their others. On February 9th, 2021, TikTok user Freak De Gemini uploaded a video where they exposed Isabella using racist and anti-gay slurs in a conversation with another white creator in 2016, where they called this other white creator an N-word lover. That I love you no matter your sex, your gender, your sexuality, your faith, or your race. Goofy alert gets that didn't age well because this you. At the bottom, calling someone the hard ER, a word used to oppress black people in my community. This is why I don't trust people with savior complexes, bro. I feel like it's always a second agenda behind what you do. I hope your parents get cancer, Isabella wrote, adding, I hope everyone you love dies. Initially, Isabella denied the authenticity of the screenshots, claiming they had been photoshopped. First, you try to spin a narrative that I photoshopped it. But they later admitted to their involvement, confirming that the screenshots were real. Isabella posted a public apology on February 13th of 2020. In my past, I said disgusting things to people, and I am so ashamed of myself for using racist rhetoric and derogatory language to hurt others, because I knew what that word meant, and I understood the power behind it, but I said it anyway because it was the meanest thing that I could think of, and I am so sorry to everyone, but especially to those in the black community, because only you guys can forgive me for this, and there is no excuse, and there are no justifications for what I said, and you guys deserve better. And when I first saw the screenshots, I didn't even think that they were real because I forgot how hateful and how angry of a person I used to be. And it hurts my soul knowing that I said those things. But the screenshots and the things I've said in my past are not a reflection of who I am today. And I am so grateful for the people in my life that I met after high school, in college, at my previous jobs, and on TikTok who took their time to educate me on their, exper their experiences. Because listening to them was so powerful and a real reality check for me. So I want to take this time to take a step back and share my platform with some amazing Black creators who are going to tell their story to try and educate others on the trauma that happens when we use this kind of language. I know that my words hurt people, and I know that my words have consequences, and that there is no immediate fix for my actions, but I am so deeply sorry for all the pain that I've caused. Isabella also announced that they would take a step back from TikTok to allow more space for Black creators in order for them to educate others on the trauma that happens when we use that kind of language. That's their responsibility to educate everyone on that, I think pretty much all of us know by now. Black creators immediately criticized Isabella's apology, with TikTok star and activist Morgan Dot the Creator taking aim at Isabella's fake crying and very scripted apology. Everything I hated about only Jay's apology. Number first is the fake crying. I don't know what Miss Little Thing Thing thought she was doing, but she was like, <laughs> like she was crying when we all know she wasn't. Stop. Admitting to the fact that when she said, she thought that was the best jab to make at a person. She felt like loving a black person was so disgusting that that was the best jab to make at somebody. Like, <laughs> saying she's gonna take a step back to share her platform with black creators. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo tasting platform. Another TikTok creator, Siete Says, expressed that Isabella's use of a racist 
Twitter to insult someone for being in a relationship with a black person was so hateful and it is so violent. No. Here's the thing, she didn't just say the N-word. It's not like she was mouthing it and said the words in a song. There are levels to it. There's the white influencer dancing and then mouthing the words with an A at the end. There's calling someone the N-word. There's calling someone the N-word with a hard R at the end. And then there's calling someone a n -over. A slur is a slur, but to insult someone for being in a relationship with a black person by calling them a n lover? It does not get any worse than that. It is so hateful and it is so violent. Bro, a forced, fake, watered down apology will not cut that. And after days of your fans and other black creators begging you to address it, who child for you to be as intelligent as you are with your little psychology facts? That is some dumb sh four days to address it during black history month due to the controversy only js lost several sponsorships and most notably lost their know-it-all podcast that they did with netflix which was canceled by netflix shortly after the insensitive messages resurfaced on social media a big aspect of isabella's apology video is when they said that they'd be sharing their platform with other black creators so I want to take this time to take a step back and share my platform with some amazing black creators who are going to tell their story to try and educate others on the trauma. As a result, black TikTok creator Aunt Karen Zero reached out to Isabella discussing a potential collaboration. It seemed like a promising start to Isabella making amends and educating themselves, but unfortunately, all of these plans came to a standstill when only Jayus stopped replying to Aunt Karen's emails. Aunt Karen made a TikTok directed at Isabella where she said that black creators were only tokens for Isabella to use. So this message is for you only, Jayus, and honestly, hopefully they don't take this down for harassment or bullying because Auntie always has receipts. Now, you become a mutual of mine. We email and suddenly you've dropped off the face of the earth. So are black people just tokens for you to use when you're ready to play? Isabella, I'm assuming by now not wanting another massive wave of backlash coming their way, reached out to Aunt Karen privately and tried to settle the drama by apologizing to Aunt Karen and saying they were unable to get back to Aunt Karen because of their busy schedule and the fact that they have ADHD, which made them completely forget about the promised collaboration. Um. So I am sorry for basically ghosting you. I didn't mean to do that. I just have a very chaotic schedule and ADHD on top of that. So I genuinely just forgot. Um, you could have just hit me up again, but instead you decided to go public and try to add public pressure onto me. And that's not fucking cool. So I don't want to collaborate. Which I know a lot of people who have ADHD took offense to that because it was sort of using it as a blanket excuse when you're able to be fully functional and capable as a person with ADHD. That being said, I also saw a comment on YouTube explaining some aspects of ADHD that may be reasons for why Isabella acts the way they do. Not to use the they're literally neurodivergent excuse, but y'all should look into rejection sensitive dysphoria. It's hard to take the hate bait. I could see that applying to them, not at all making excuses for their racism or ableism. Did Jayus really say that like she has a neurological disorder that makes her forget things? Come on, man. Like, I, I I can be ableist here because I have ADHD. Shut up. Please stop, Jayus. What are you doing? <sighs> and then only Jayus went full mask off on TikTok. Isabella posted a very angry and enraged video onto their TikTok where they were talking about the controversy they found themselves in again. Today's episode of What Are People Mad At Me For Now? Not checking! my emails in a timely manner. I wish I was joking. I forgot to respond to an email from this creator that wanted to collab with me. And you know, instead of just like hitting me up again, they made seven videos about it. Can you please leave me the alone? I have a diagnosed neurological disorder that makes me forget things and procrastinate due to time blindness. I forget to eat for days. I procrastinate sleep for more days. I barely 
text my family back and I just had to move apartments because my address got leaked and you're gonna throw a fit because I didn't make you my priority? <laughs> now if you excuse me, I'm gonna go get drunk as in Las Vegas to celebrate my 22nd birthday and y'all can keep crying for my attention. And Isabella continued to try and spin the narrative in this video, claiming that Aunt Karen should have reached out to them if Aunt Karen wanted to continue collaborating. However, Aunt Karen uploaded a video where they showed evidence of them reaching out to Only Jayus privately multiple times. Only Jayus, if you watch my last video, that receipt, that email, was dated for 324. In your voicemail, you said I should have emailed you again? Baby, what's this? This you? Isabella eventually blocked Aunt Karen on social media and later deleted their apology video. And after these controversies, almost all of Only JS's TikToks would receive massive negative comments and a ton of backlash. All of these back-to-back -back scandals resulted in Only JS becoming one of the most hated creators on TikTok. But Isabella attempted to move past the situation and would be somewhat successful at moving forward. They continued to grow on social media and their views on YouTube saw a substantial rise due to the introduction of YouTube Shorts in 2021, which basically allowed them to re-upload all of their successful TikTok content onto YouTube. So reality is only JS continued to grow, and although many people tried to defend Isabella's actions in their comment section, Isabella was 17 years old when they made remarks, and many agreed they were definitely old enough to know what those words meant and their intention with those words. And Isabella said that they were trying to say the meanest thing they could think of, meaning they knew what they were doing. I knew what that word meant and I understood the power behind it, but I said it anyway because it was the meanest thing that I could think of. Isabella tried to blame their behavior on the conservative town they were living in and the fact that they played Call of Duty a lot. I am educating myself on this i'm not a f racist i just said dumb in 2016 because i played too much fucking call of duty i do think that omi js tries to do a lot of good i love you no matter your sex your gender your sexuality your faith or your race they have talked about a lot of work they've done to educate themselves and i think that's wonderful and at the end of the day it's not my place to say whether or not omi js is deserving of forgiveness or has done enough to warrant it the first book that i decided to pick up was how to be anti-racist by dr ibram kendi and this will push readers that think that they're not racist into being something better i don't think any large creator especially one with millions and millions of followers can ever steer clear of controversy but only JS is a great lesson that how you handle controversy can define your reputation on a platform. A lot of people just couldn't forgive or forget what Isabella had said. And not only did Isabella lie about the screenshots being photoshopped to avoid accountability, but they also lied about wanting to work with other black content creators and have yet to collaborate with a single black creator on TikTok. So do the actions of Isabella's past define who they they are in this circumstance? Or is it how they continually handled being called out for both their past and present actions that truly matters? Where did part two go? So are black people just tokens for you to use when you're ready to play? I know that a lot of people hope to have influencers who are truly good or at least good intentioned, but it seems to the followers of Only Jayus, who Only Jayus is as a person doesn't really matter that much. The brand of Only Jayus has almost become entirely separate and is able to grow entirely on its own regardless of the controversies that Isabella encounters. Let me get this straight, you just told the world to rob disabled people. Disgusting people like you are who make me and other disabled people feel incredibly unsafe in the world. After controversy and controversy, things started to die down for Only Jayus. However, in June of 2021, Isabella uploaded a TikTok that many in the community saw as ableist. The TikTok, which was called Illegal Life Advice, was supposed to be a satirical life hack video, 
where only JS described how someone could steal a wallet from a person with a service dog. If a service dog ever approaches you but they're alone, that means that their owner's in trouble and they probably can't move, so you should follow him, because you'll get a free wallet. Um... <sighs> Why do able-bodied people think they can make jokes at disabled people's expense? Especially because I know you think that's a joke, but there's people who will take that seriously and actually do that to a disabled person. The video was supposed to be funny, I guess, and not taken seriously. Like, no logical, decent person would steal a wallet from a service dog. But the content was also just mean-spirited and came at the expense of people with disabilities. Like, even if it is a joke, it's a joke made at the expense of a disabled person. And I'm sure that that's really reality that many people with service dogs are terrified of, not something that they take lightly or laugh about. And with the millions and millions of followers that only JS has, who knows who could have seen this video and taken it as genuine life advice. And people were quick to point this out in the comments. I'm sure not only hurt by this video if they are disabled, but also very worried about what kind of example this video would set. Let me get this straight, you just told the world to rob disabled people, incapacitated disabled people who are looking for help as a hot tip. This is incredibly ableist and really, really dangerous. As someone who is disabled and has a service dog for my syncope where I pass out and you know, my service dog helps me to wake up and if she can't do that, she would go look for help because I'm unconscious. I always am afraid what happens to me when I'm unconscious. Disgusting people like you are who make me and other disabled people feel incredibly unsafe in the world. So this controversy sparked another fire which flared up the conversation surrounding all of their previous controversies. And this was when people discovered that Isabella had used a ghostwriter for their original apology video. And the first video alluding to Isabella having a ghostwriter was from TikTok creator Victoria Hammett. Let's recap, shall we? This creator said the most disgustingly racist thing that I've ever seen a big creator say on this app. Then they had someone ghostwrite their apology so that they didn't lose their brand deals. And now they post this in a video that is a series of very real illegal life hacks. So we know Jace doesn't care about hurting people or making people mad, but they do care about making money. Then TikTok user Sean S. Vivi made a series of TikToks, which included a blurred out but still identifiable image of Isabella talking about how their apology was ghostwritten by his close friend. Where did part two go? Where did part two go where it had the promises to the people that you wronged? You made a commitment, yet it's not up. This is not the first time this video has been taken down mysteriously. Also, speaking about apologies, did you know this? Then they had someone ghostwrite their apology so that they didn't lose their brand deals. The person that helped you write the apology is my friend, and you've wronged them over and over like you have me. For a while, the ghostwriter remained unnamed. That is a tongue twister. <laughs> until a TikTok user named Xander the Empath came forward and confirmed that they were the ghostwriter for Isabella's apology. They had someone ghostwrite their apology so that they didn't lose their brand deals. The person that helped you write the apology is me, hi. I already talked about it once before on my channel, but immediately after they confirmed it was true with me over text message, I then tried to help them to the best of my ability while still being extremely angry and frustrated. Helped with a good bit of the apology, especially the part about black creatives. When we were both talking about that part in the apology, I really did think that they would hold up their end of the bargain, you know? And even if it's not the case, I definitely do feel like I was like a little bit used. Even though I was friends with them before this even happened, it just seemed like they were in a rough spot, they needed a black person to talk to, I was one of the only people, and Sean as well, able to talk to them and still show kindness and love to them. And up to this day, it just seems like that end of the bargain just hasn't been held. And I just feel really shitty about that. What was initially a spark erupted into a fire of controversy that grew and grew. And after the smoke cleared, only Jaius lay barren and exposed, the world having seen and acknowledged all of their flaws. They did initially lose 700,000 followers, which is a lot, 
but quickly gained it all back and then some. So a ton of people gathered to protest only Jaius's lack of accountability on their social media platforms. And eventually, Isabella became one of the few content creators to receive a ban petition on change.org, which has almost 500,000 signatures. And the goal of this petition probably isn't to fully ban only Jaius, but more so to express everyone's disapproval of this creator. You are your own worst enemy. You are creating your own downfall. You won't apologize and mean what you say because you don't truly care. And we are holding you accountable for that. But Isabella has taken a really relaxed approach to the petition, having openly mocked it on Twitter multiple times, laughing the petition off, and wishing the creator luck in receiving over 13 million signatures. Oh no, a petition to ban only Jays on TikTok? What am I gonna do? 35k? That's cute. Okay, listen, if you can get 13.5 million signatures on this petition, the only way that TikTok would ever ban me, I'll ban myself. As we saw, in one of Only Jaius's very first controversies with their tweet, they've claimed themselves that hate really negatively affects them. And I sort of wish that instead of viewing it as that, they would have actually looked at what the change.org petition said, but instead they let the angry side of themselves continue to come out. And I do think it's all a facade from someone who's clearly hurting and someone who feels a great sense of rejection. I've found in my personal life that people who act this way are actually the most afraid of being rejected. So they tend to focus on it more and start to lash out or act out in ways that cause people to reject them further. I think if Isabella were to do what they promise and collaborate with black creators, focus on being a more kind person to others, even behind the scenes with other creators, and take more accountability, they probably would have been able to completely rebuild their reputation. Though I will say I'm not sure if a reputation really even matters to people if their following is still growing, their brand is still thriving, and they're still making a lot of money. To some people, honor and reputation are really important, but to others, they're just completely meaningless. Even YouTuber Papa Gut, who followed their story, talked to them personally, and offered advice, called them a bad person. Frankly, I think Jace is a bad person. And like, it's one of the reasons why she's always in the forefront of drama because she thinks she's literally better than everybody. Me coming out ended up with like me in foster care. So like it was a huge thing oh, in this small yeah. town. But hurt people hurt people. Throughout learning about Only Jaius, this mantra has continued to ring through my head, especially as I think about what's known of Only Jaius's past before their start on social media. Not that it ever fully excuses one's actions, but no one exists within a vacuum. There's a reason why people hurt others, and it's usually because someone hurt them. And and so the pattern continues on, a ripple effect of hurt and inflicting suffering because you have suffered. Not many people are naturally angry people, at least to my knowledge. Usually something happens that causes this anger inside them. I nor any of us will ever fully know the story of what has caused Only Jaius to lash out the way that they have. You're gonna throw a fit because I didn't make you my priority? But what has been shared of their past, well, explains a lot. Only Jaius was born Isabella Avila on April 12th, 1999 in Las Vegas, Nevada. According to various sources, they belong to a joint family and are the third child among 11 children. So yeah. how many siblings do you have? 11. <laughs> what? At the age of 12, they moved to California, where they currently reside. Their parents were not married, so Isabella would move back and forth between Nevada to New Jersey to visit their parents. Uh, where, where are you exactly from? You're from multiple places, right? Vegas, New York? I was born and raised in Vegas. Uh, dad lived in Vegas, mom lived in New Jersey, New York area, so I moved back and forth. Okay. And then went to high school 
near Bakersfield, if you know the area, it yeah, sucks. Yeah. Uh, and then moved to LA about a year ago. Unfortunately, at the beginning of Isabella's junior year of high school, due to an unknown incident, they were placed in foster care. I didn't come out until like I was a junior in high school. Yeah. Uh, and everybody knew about it because me coming out ended up with like me in foster care. You're my my out. parents, I, I have a good relationship with my parents now, but when I first came out as gay, it was like, I had to go to church school. I had to learn how to be straight. Uh, I had to hide uh, it. I couldn't tell my siblings. It became physical at one point. Like it mm. just, it wasn't a good experience. And so when I got put into foster care, everybody kind of was like, oh, sh Belle's in foster care. They figured out why Belle's gay. To have what little family you may have known taken away from you while in high school is certainly an infuriating thing and also shows that maybe Isabella wasn't getting the best love and care for themselves growing up. Were you this positive about it going through it the entire no. time? No. I have told you I was an extremely toxic, hateful person. Yeah. I've gone through a lot of therapy and worked on it and like figured out what was wrong. But like, and like I was just mean to everybody. I got into arguments for no good reason yeah. and said awful shit just because it's it shouldn't sound like an excuse and i don't want it to rage. sound like that but like it was just like i hated myself so i hated everybody kind of thing and on top of that there's definitely a ton of flaws in the foster care system especially to those in the lgbtq communities and i'm sure all of this was a very isolating thing to experience how long were you in foster care for from 16 to 18 technically but Damn. i did extended foster care until i was 21. what does Damn. being in foster care entail when you're like older and you're like 16 versus being moved like eight to years a old, lot right? of different houses i just had a suit i had a bag of like all my clothes and like i got put into this one house they didn't speak any english i had to have a four-year-old translate to the mom to me like what time i have to go to school and then i got moved to a different house across town and they were like we're not driving you to school you have to walk so i had to like walk across town to go to school and that was weird. They like tried to get me to sell several times. Then uh, kind of like slept on friends' couches for a little bit until they found me another foster parent because there's really not a lot of foster parents in general. Uh, and then lived with one at the end that was really good until I was 18 and got my own place. As a creative outlet, Isabella used their foster parents' computer to make life story videos on YouTube. Isabella has cited Philip DeFranco as their biggest influence in creating content. What's your favorite YouTube channel? I mean, besides mine, uh, I'm kidding. Philip DeFranco. Oh, I think I watch him like every single day. And while someone's past certainly doesn't excuse their present actions, it definitely helps explain it. And to me personally, it seems that Isabella was a very hurt person whose only outlet and escape from their life was through social media. So when their platform is threatened, especially by hate comments, they lash out in an intense and angry attempt to protect what they may deem their peace and only escape from their past. What are people mad at me for now? So, who is Isabella and what do they deserve? That isn't for me to decide and maybe not even for you to decide, but rather the collective of people who make up all of social media, who are able to decide who is worthy of attention and admiration, and who are able to take all of that away. Currently, Isabella still receives millions of views on their content. In addition, their follower count has gradually increased despite all the controversy. And perhaps this is what has insulated Isabella from seeing all of their wrongdoings. Their TikToks are thriving even if people don't like them. And in a way, I worry that will end up being their biggest downfall because they'll never really have to grow as a person or get past all the anger of their past and forgive those that may hate them and accept personal accountability and responsibility for the hand they played in all of this. And I think if only Jayus doesn't do those things, they'll continue to run into the same problems over and over again she does this constantly she does this constantly it's irritating um and like it's one of the reasons why she's always in the forefront of drama because she thinks she's literally better than everybody and that's all for this video on only jayas if you made it to the end thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video hope you're good until then.